Welcome to a lesson on the floor function. In this video, we'll define a floor function and also graph a floor function by hand. The floor function, also called the greatest integer function, is a function that returns the largest integer less than or equal to the input x. And therefore the domain or set of inputs would be the set of real numbers and the range or set of outputs would be the set of integers. There are several ways to express the floor or greatest integer function, which we see here on the left. Notice how for these first three we have different types of brackets. And we can also use capital INT or the word floor. But from my experience, the most common way to express the floor function would be this notation here. We're looking at the brackets, we have a pair of vertical bars, but at the bottom, the vertical bars are turned inward. In contrast, the ceiling function, we can use a similar notation where we have a pair of vertical bars, but the upper part of the vertical bars are turned in rather than the bottom. Over here on the right, we see the graph of the basic floor function. And notice how the floor function is discontinuous, and that's because the function values will always be integers. To better understand what's happening here, let's focus on one piece of our floor function or greatest integer function. Let's first focus on this piece here. Let's complete a table of values. When x or the input is one, we're looking for the largest integer or greatest integer that is less than or equal to one. And since one is an integer, the function value would be positive one. Notice when x is one, we have this open point here at y equals zero, and we have this closed point here at y equals one. This is telling us when x is one, the function value or y value is one, not zero, where we have the open point. Now let's look at what happens when x is 1.5. When the input or x value is 1.5, we're looking for the largest integer that is less than or equal to 1.5, which would be one. So the point would be 1.5 comma one here, on this piece, and at x equals 1.9, again we're asking what is the largest integer that is less than or equal to 1.9, which would be one. But as soon as x reaches the value of two, we're asking what is the largest integer that is less than or equal to two, and since two is an integer, the function value now jumps to positive two. So when x is two, notice how on this piece we have an open point showing the function value is not here, it's up here at this closed point. The floor function contains the point two comma two. Now before we take a look at graphing one of these on our own, let's take a look at two negative values. Sometimes these can be a bit confusing. Let's take a look at when x is equal to negative 0.5. To find the output, we're asking what is the largest integer that is less than or equal to negative 0.5? And that would be negative one. Negative one is the largest integer that is less than or equal to negative 0.5. So when x is negative 0.5, the function value would be here at negative one. And if we consider the x value of negative 1.8, we're asking what is the largest integer that is less than or equal to negative 1.8, which would be negative two, which would be this point here on our graph. And when graphing these types of functions by hand, typically as soon as we find one piece, we can quickly graph the remaining pieces. Let's look at an example. F of x equals the greatest integer of the quantity x plus two. Let's begin by completing a table of values. Let's look at the x values from one to two. So let's select x equals one, 1.5, 1 1.8, and then two. So when x is one, notice how we'd have the greatest integer of one plus two or three. So we're looking for the largest integer that is less than or equal to three. So because of the equal part, the function value would be three, which means our function contains the point one comma three, which should be here. When x is 1.5, we'd have the greatest integer of 1.5 plus two, that's 3.5. So we're looking for the largest integer that is less than or equal to 3.5, 
which again would be three. So that means when x is 1.5, the function value is here at three. And then when x is 1.8, we'd have the greatest integer of 3.8. So the largest integer that is less than or equal to 3.8 would be again three. So that would be this point here. But when x is two, we'd have the greatest integer of four. The largest integer that is less than or equal to four would be four. So this gives us the point two comma four, which is here. Which means for this piece here, over this interval, we'd have a closed point on the left, an open point here at x equals two, because remember the function value is up here at four. So this would be one piece of our greatest integer function. And now from here we can just copy and paste this piece over and over again at the correct function value. Notice from x equals two all the way to x equals three, except at x equals three we have an open point, and then when x is three, the function value would jump to five. And this would be a segment here with an open point at the end. And now we just continue this pattern. So we have an open point on the right, closed point on the left, connected, and continue. Open point on the right, closed point on the left, and connect. Open point, closed point, connect. Open point, closed point, connect, and so on. Just to be sure we did this correctly, let's go and check a few negative values. Let's select negative three, negative 2.5, negative 2.1, and negative two. So when x is negative three, we'd have the greatest integer of negative three plus two, that's negative one. The largest integer that is less than or equal to negative one would be negative one. Notice how when x is negative three, we have a closed point here at y equals negative one which is correct. And now when x is negative 2.5, we'd have the greatest integer of negative 2.5 plus two, that's negative 0.5. So the largest integer that is less than or equal to negative 0.5 would be negative one. And for negative 2.1, we'd have the greatest integer of negative 0.1. The largest integer less than or equal to negative 0 0.1 is negative one. But then when x is negative two, we'd have the greatest integer of zero. The largest integer less than or equal to zero is zero because zero is an integer. So notice when x is negative two, we're here on the y-axis where the function value is zero. In our next lesson, we'll take a look at graphing these functions on the graphing calculator. I hope you found this helpful.